Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Manifest. This is actually the second episode because it was a back-to-back episode tonight. Uh, a lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, we're picking up with Ben being tested, and afterwards... Um, we're going through, like, some of the information about, like, obviously, like, you know, them learning, well, Ben learning about what they learned last episode about the Sapphire, and then it's like, whoa, is that the same material was on my hand? So it's like, is that kind of implying, like, that's the source of what brought us back or, like, what's doing this to us? And it's like, if we can figure this out, we can unravel this mystery and stuff like that. So that's the interesting aspect. But Ben has, like, a calling about like 15 different people Bernie in particular it focuses on this woman Rachel which interesting enough uh, Mick ends up having a calling too but her calling is in a form of uh, the tarot card the world um, and the volcano in it burning so it's like it's so interesting like it seems like their callings connected them on the same case but they had two separate callings and I think that's supposed to imply the fact it's showcasing that Ben and Michaela are going down very different, two different paths, but it does seem like the calling wants that, because normally, if it wants them on the same case, it give them the exact same calling if, if they're supposed to work together on it, but the fact that they got similar callings but two different versions of it makes it seem like they're supposed to go down two pa- different paths. And we'll ultimately have to wait and see. Maybe that's also part of the judgment now going forward is also like, you have to question everything of like, okay, so you're supposed to follow all the callings, but the callings are sending you down a path, but it's like, maybe these paths are tests to see how you react, like, how you handle things might kind of be in itself, you know, the test, it's like a test you not even realize, and you're like, oh, I'm just going to follow the callings, it's like, there's times where you have to follow the callings, sure, but kind of handle it, that, de- you know, depict de- will uh, determine how you get judged or something. Let's stay with, uh, uh, you know, Eureka and everything, so, obviously, you know, uh, Sanvi answered the question I had last episode, or like, what was that symbol? I was like, I'm not supposed to know what it is. I'm an idiot. It's the Vatican symbol. I was like, oh, interesting. And it's a piece of driftwood. I mean, like, my brain was like, wait, like, Alz- um, Alzura, like, wasn't he on a boat? Like, wasn't that, like, I was like, are we tying this back to last season? But it seems like, no, it's something completely unrelated. I thought that's what that was set up to be, but no, it wasn't. Um... But basically, uh, the head scientist, she's kind of like, all right, we're looking into this. Um, so from now on, all of you are going to report to Sami. Sami's going to report to me. And it's like, wait, why are we going to report to Sami? It's like, oh, you guys are some of the greatest minds out there. Yet none of you discovered what she discovered. And so that's thanks to her, you all get to keep your jobs. And you see Sami kind of go like, yikes. Like, I wish she hadn't said that. Because that's super not going to make her popular amongst the others. Because even when she's asking this dude for information, he was like, oh, I'll give you my report in a couple hours. Like, the fact is, it's not necessarily your field and then um zombies buddy has her back by being like oh yeah i actually read your thing it's not that hard to understand i was like oh boom shots shots fired uh but basically they end up ultimately finding out that there's something in the driftwood ends up being some dna looking through it it turns out that this whole thing driftwood goes back about six thousand years it's a peacock which is interesting because it's all heavily ties into the peacock whether it's uh the mott you know last trial um thing that um olive was working on that plus um all this stuff with um now it's like seeing peacocks i was like them being the symbol of all of this is so interesting uh but then like they talk to it's like i love like uh her buddy being like oh yeah now let's go talk to patrick look i warn you nerd alert it's like oh yeah this is my gaming buddy patrick like the fact of the matter is it turns out that uh the driftwood came up after you know like seven years or something like or like it came up like either seven years ago or was kind of in the ground for like seven years or something, but then it turns out like it was like an earthquake that released it, the same as the Telfin, and Tommy's like, whoa, there was an earthquake? He's like, yeah, everyone felt it, but apparently on the maps there wasn't one, so as they kind of refer to it as like a seismic ghost, and then they talk about like, right, the pilot from season one, um, the one who ended up kind of killing him and that doctor, which, don't know if they're ever gonna, like, I kind of took it as like a, no, they're straight up dead, but someone had theorized, I remember back then being like, oh, maybe what he was thinking did work out, because we still haven't found their bodies, we found Kelly's body, so if they were dead, wouldn't we have found their bodies by now, considering, you know, but maybe their bodies just haven't popped up, but the fact is they haven't, 
kind of implies what that person said back then that maybe that maybe they did time travel there there is something of that but basically it's like he saw purple lightning but no one else did so it's kind of like ghost lightning now ghost seismic activity but then considering the area like uh somebody goes and talks to the doctors like around that uh, time this is all also around a volcano which is interesting because she hasn't talked to ben this episode but um michaela had seen a volcano and going skipping around a little bit um so does Cal at the end of the episode. So it's this driftwood is important, significant to the point like there's a dark uh, cloud glooming over, you know, uh, the uh, Eureka building because of this. So it's like, why is this so? Because it seems like this is the secret to figuring out everything. But it's like, that's why it's so scary, because it turns out. This is connected to Noah's Ark. I was like, what? Like, I, I, I told, I thought it was interesting because, like, in the beginning of the series, I would have never known we were going down the biblical route. Do I care? No, I think that's interesting. But it's just like, when I, I never thought, like, oh, the supernatural force that, like, made the plane disappear and stuff like that. I didn't think, I didn't go down the divine route. I thought, like, oh, it was like some entity or something. Like, you never know. I don't, I didn't necessarily think aliens, but I thought, like, a supernatural being or something. Like, I thought we were thinking, it just never crossed my mind that we'd be going down. Because this is, I mean, they, they pushed it, a, it's been an element a little bit. I mean, especially when you actually think about certain elements in the show, there's a very biblical element to a lot of stuff. Even when, like, uh, Ben ended up saving all of last season, it was, like, very biblical, the light and everything. It's like, yeah, there's a lot of, like, imagery that is very biblical in the right, but it's like, obviously this season, like, it really kicked it up, especially now being, like, Noah's Ark. But now it's, like, with this information, finding out what happened to Noah's Ark, the fact is, if you can unravel, if they can, like, figure this out, they can backtrack it and unravel all of this mystery and kind of be able to find this power, replicate it, and use it for themselves, which immediately, Zombie didn't have this reaction, but it was like, shouldn't you be worried about people, I mean, once again, eh, it's not the same thing, it's not a one-for-one, one, but it's, like, what I keep bringing up. Isn't that kind of what the Major did? The Major wanted to reverse engineer the calling so that, basically all like soldiers could be on the same wavelength it was her way of trying to protect the country basically uh create like that way like when soldiers go into battle they all like see the same thing or kind of like linked minds that's kind of what she was planning on using like the a28ers and the callings for so but like you wanted to use the power and stuff like that that sounds a little like the major and i'm surprised somebody's not kind of seeing that but maybe it's just kind of a thing of like oh like what good this could do for the world the scientific world well to be fair this is kind of going beyond science because even like the doctor was like yeah i've kind of gone as far as i could science wise we kind of start have to go in down the divine right route now but somebody wants to share this with the eight two eighters because it's like this is includes them so they have a right to know but Vance is kind of like, nah, this is national security. You're part of the, uh, this whole project now. So meaning everything you know is government secrets and you can't tell anyone, even Ben. It doesn't come down to whether you trust him or not, which is so, I mean, I guess because Vance's argument could be, well, I'm in this position right now because of Ben anyway. So he's not getting information. He has no one to blame but himself because he inadvertently put me in a position where I kind of had to take this job, you know? So that's the argument. But now you obviously somebody feels bad about keeping this information from Ben, but that might be like the great like dark cloud we saw and that might be like what's to come you know with all of this what the issue is that them trying to understand this power and kind of make it its own either the callings or it's you know this divine intervention might step in and kind of cause some issues on that front or maybe it's supposed to kind of represent like Jace did like his you know as they say like his soul or whatever came and killed Corey and Pete like maybe it's a situation where like them tapping into this power is going to backlash and it's going to cause mass devastation like maybe it's going to have a major effect against all the passengers and well just really anyone related well the passengers are the only one that are left now that we're at least that we're aware of because uh, the meth heads were the most recent ones. We don't know if there's still anyone out there. It looks like everyone else connected to this is just eight two eighters and Zeke. You know, so we'll, we'll see. But um, I'm curious to see where that kind of ends up turning out. Uh, will Zombie keep that secret forever? Because you know, it's like especially like you know, knowing how important of a mission this is, which kind of flows into this episode because. Ben and Michaela looking more into this, they like track this all back to one particular person and that is a woman named Rachel. So it's like, all right, they're trying to track her down. They show up at her house and it's like, oh, I'm Hannah. Oh, this is my husband, Jonah. But that was supposed to be uh, Rachel. So like, oh, what's up with that? Immediately I was like, Hannah. I was like, are you his, her sister? Oh, and behold, he's her sister. I was like, oh, that's weird. So you're the sister married, she married her sister's ex-husband. I was like, that's interesting. 
But obviously Ben and Michaela bring it up. It's like, yeah, they kind of have similar awkward circumstances of returning home and things being different. Grace and the Daniel thing, obviously like Olive being older. Michaela, Jared uh, was with someone else. Um, so that wasn't the easiest thing on that front. So they both kind of understood it. But it's like, oh, to, you know, the way Jonah and um, uh, Hannah were kind of explaining, it's like, oh, yeah, things aren't like, oh, my sister's kind of a little bit crazy. She hasn't been right. She didn't accept the fact is that we were together. She just couldn't accept it. Um, she couldn't just move on. And to the point, well, she showed up and we had to get a restraining order against her. So it's like, okay. At first it's like, well, now it seems like maybe it's kind of implying like we need to uh, reach out to Rachel and get her to kind of come to terms about their relationship. And then we get an interesting development where like Rachel was like, no, it's not what you think. Like, uh, I was in an accident, so I stayed in Jamaica. Uh, no, uh, I ended up going, uh, I forgot what, how, how they explained it, but basically, like, I think it was a thing of, she got hurt and she ended up going, uh, leaving Jamaica on her own and Jonah stayed behind. Um, and it's like, but then later on, it's like, okay, she brought up that information. Why didn't Jonah mention anything about the accident or like them going together, but leaving separate? Like, what was up with that? Um, it's like, and then even Michaela being like, why does it feel like everyone's lying to not only themselves, but to us? Then we start getting deeper into it, and it turns out there's a tragic situation going on here because um, you had um, you have uh, Jarrett looking into it, and it turns out like, oh, like she with the accident in Jamaica, Jamaica it was her crashing, uh, him crashing into her, and it's like, wait, because like the moment you saw the picture of her, I was like. I was wondering whether that was for the accident because I was like wondering was that was a cover up or something but it's like no it was for the accident but I was also like I, I was wondering like immediately like when so, like I said because I associated I was, I was like those are like those might be abuse marks but it's like no it was from the crash but it turns out he was abusive like because uh, it turns out she's been trying to get away from him and the Jamaica trip was kind of like her way and especially the five years but for her to come back and find her sisters with him it's like she knows what kind of abuser he is so she's trying in her own way she's been trying to protect her sister because they also go and talk to the neighbor who had filed a report like but because rachel wrote the restraining order but hannah didn't press any charges and it turns out like oh okay so it's a situation where you know basically the the, the lady who kind of works there at the house talks about like oh yeah the dude who lives here um him and uh jonah are kind of good and so we know there's issues here, but he just happens to turn a blind eye and ear to a lot of the stuff that goes down, like him, uh, Jonah throwing stuff, yelling. It's like on a regular basis. It's like Hannah's like a nice woman and she's with this guy. So it's like, so it heavily, you know, it's like, wait, there's abuse going on here. And now it makes sense what Hannah was saying, like things aren't what you think they are. So. And I think this in itself speaks volumes. Michaela's coming from this as the perspective of a cop of like, right, I'm going to help someone who's in an abusive situation. Ben's there for that, but it also like shades his reasoning for it when it's like, oh, it's like, yeah, I've got to stop her before she ruins everything for everyone on a lifeboat. Like that he has that perspective is kind of messed up because now it it is it becomes a thing of in the beginning you had altruistic reasons like no you're just like i'm following the callings i'm gonna help someone that's it now it's a situation of you're only helping people because like, i don't want you to screw this up for any one of us not me not my family like there's too many lives at stake here because it's like it's like 200 but i think they said specifically the numbers like 189 passengers on that plane so it's like there's too many lives and i mean once again we saw dark side ben last episode of like how now that this whole thing has been revealed what it kind of has done to him and once again i just think it's so fascinating that like I said, it seems like him and Michaela are on two different paths. But I, like I said, I think that's because Michaela might be on the more right path of things and Ben might be going down a darker path. And this is the calling. He's trying to give him an opportunity, much like Jace, to make the right choice, to handle things the right way, maybe. I don't know. Or maybe he has, you know, been, been kind of designated the savior because, like, a lot of this, because they're at the core of this mystery, the Stone family in general, because of Cal, but also Michaela and Ben have been at the core of it, but Ben's the one that kind of seems to be, this has kind of been his project, and Michaela's as well, but it's always been his on a certain extent, so maybe that's what it is. Whether he's chosen or not, maybe he's kind of like, hey, let me make my Kingdom Hearts reference of the day. Maybe it's kind of like uh, Riku and Sora. Spoilers for Kingdom Hearts. 
Riku saying, you were just a delivery boy. Maybe it's kind of that, like, in a sense that Ben is kind of handling things until Cal comes of the age that he can really handle everything in his own. Maybe he's kind of his... I mean, that was kind of, like, the point from the beginning to be kind of, like, almost like his translator, to be there, to be uh, the one to kind of handle things for Cal that he necessarily couldn't. Like, maybe that's kind of what they're doing. So, like, Ben's playing this certain role, but that's only meant for Cal, so that's why he's kind of chosen as the... Um, the feeling and until Cal's ready, maybe I don't know. I feel like the earlier seasons kind of hinted at something like that. It may not even said hint. It might have even like downright said it, but I, I, it's been a while, so I don't remember. Uh, I could be like once again kind of completely and utterly full of shit on that. Uh, in in that regard, but um, Michaela goes to talk to Hannah, and it's sad because for Hannah, it's like. She was always, like, Rachel always was kind of, like, the better sister because she was beautiful, she was smart. Like, she was the one that was always winning, winning, winning. And when Jonah came into her life, for Hannah, it felt like the first time in her life she had a one-up over her sister because it's like, Jonah, oh, he picked up on the smallest things, a new shirt, new this, and he seemed, you know, it's like, oh, I used to think it was cute, the fact that he got a little jealous anytime like, my coworkers would text me. But then it got to the point, like, a friend was dealing with a breakup. They went celebrating. He showed up there, and when they were alone, he freaked out and slapped her. Like, you know, um, calling her a slut and everything. So she's just kind of like, oh, like, I probably seem like, I think she said to Michaela, like, oh, I might seem a little pathetic. Something, which Michaela's like there for her, being like, no, you know. Because the sad thing is, just, you that people staying in abusive situations like that, because for her, it's like, it would almost be like giving up on this relation. I mean, for one, just she has no idea what he'll do if she and he, she ended things. But also, like for her, it's like for for her in the first time in her life, she felt like it was a win, and it'd almost be like losing. It's it's, it's a lot of like family issues on top of like her personal issues with her sister to a certain extent, on top of like dealing with an abusive husband. It's it's a lot. But Hannah ended up, uh, not Hannah, but Rachel went to confront Jonah, had a gun, because Ben had the vision again, so he followed um, Jonah to a, uh, like, his office building and broke in. The alarm was going off. I was like, well, maybe if, because uh, it seems like uh, Rachel's probably most likely going to go kill him, so it's probably, like, best that Ben comes, and he ends up being the one to talk her down. He's saying stuff like, you know, it's like, don't rule, he already took away, like, you know, he kind of already took years from you, don't let him take the rest of your life, because you kill him, you're gonna go to jail, and so Ben ends up getting a gun, just as the cops show up, so he's the one that gets locked up, and it's like, my very stickler brother ends up getting locked up for breaking in and using having an un, unregistered firearm, it's like, well, I had to act fast, like, what did you want me to do, let, for one, it's like, his points were let Rachel kill him. I, I stopped her. Plus, I stopped her from sinking the boat. It's like he that he keeps going back to that. That to me sours like the good deeds. It's like once again, I keep doing this. I know you're probably anyone that's listening to these back to back is probably tired of it, but I keep referencing the good place because it's such a good analogy for this. Because it's like once again. All the good deeds you do mean nothing points wise when you're doing when your motivation isn't sincere. His his motivation isn't sincere. Like, oh, I'm just trying to help out a woman in a terrible situation. It's nah, I'm trying to save our hides. I'm. It, it's a very selfish rather than a very selfless action. It's kind of how I'm ch chalking it up. But he, even Michaela being like, who like assigned you to be the one to kind of handle all this? It's like for her, it's just like you could have put yourself in danger. It's like how would I have explained that the grace of something had happened to you? It's like she just doesn't like like Ben's just kind of like a wildfire in, in this particular case. It's like the way you're handling things. Like you could have called me. Like we could have handled it. It's like you going off half cocked like that. That situation could have ended badly. But for him, it's like I have to. Like it's up to me. You know. It's like but she. It's like I all those people. I saw that any point person could ruin this. And it's like, she's like, yeah, you saw 15 people. You don't even remember their names. And he, and he was like, you're right. Because maybe that's what the calling's also trying to tell me that any person can end up ruining this. So they have their very large disagreement about it. But then we also had the interesting thing where Grace kind of agrees with Michaela, but also at the same time agrees with Ben about like, right, we got to protect this lifeboat. So I think they're both coming from the position of, especially in Grace's case, because it's like, right, there's a lot of people whose lives are going to be turned upside down if this goes sideways, because it's like, Olive is going to lose her her brother and her um, dad again. It doesn't seem, well, Eden did have the um, calling when she was inside of Grace. Well, Grace had those, but it's like, now it begs the question, like, does that mean, like, if they get, like, I don't know, 
I don't remember if that came up whether or not Eden has like the marker or not. You know, it's like she's an eight to eight baby, so whatever is inside of Ben and everything kind of flowed to her. So she's probably a special case, kind of like Cal, but under different circumstances. Um, for all we know, maybe similar circumstances. Like we still don't fully understand. Like once again, Cal's circumstances, like as it being special, we don't know the full extent of them. So maybe there's something more to that. But nevertheless, um, there's all that. There's also the uh, whole um, Jared and um, the whole Jared and uh, God, a uh, Sarah thing because it's like oh you know uh, their date last episode and everything and now she's at the precinct even then being like oh I didn't know Jared was dating and it's like yeah that's uh, Sarah the major's order it's like probably a work related thing it's like I thought that case was closed yeah it's like I don't know maybe they are dating it's like really out of every any woman like. The Major's daughter, it's like, well, yeah, well, you know, and Michaela's trying to act like it's not an issue, but it is an issue, but she's like, no, I'm just kind of trying to look out for you type of thing. Um, when it's all said and done, though, um, she even asked him about it, but for him, it's like, yeah, she's nothing like her mom, she's smart, she's sweet, and he's, he's like, yeah, if you're happy, I'm happy. Um, the sad thing is, which, I know, it ties very interestingly into Zeke's side of the episode, because he's with Cal, Cal's, like, dropping on some books to Stella, the girl he likes, um, but he was hoping, the reason why he was insistent on Zeke showing up, because he was hoping Zeke could get a reading from her to find out she feels the same way about Cal, but he's like, right, I get it, like, you know, uh, these powers of ours are pretty impressive, there's no real guidebook on them, but yeah, you know, kind of gave him the Spider-Man speech, not directly, but it is a, well, great power comes great responsibility, like, we shouldn't be abusing these and using them the wrong way, and, you know, maybe you're caught, maybe, um, maybe this is just the world's way of kind of saying, like, maybe you should figure it out on your own, uh, how you feel about her, and it's just the irony behind that is because, unintentionally, Zeke feels what's going through Michaela, because, his power kicks in for raw emotions and like when you're feeling a lot I think that's when like he it's not like he tries to use it and it just kind of kicked in now whether that ends up being a thing later on whether it's like ironically enough he starts kind of abusing it we'll have to see I mean once again like maybe even though he's passed the trial maybe he's still being judged you know just like oh well we're ready to pull the uh pull the wool over your eyes at any point in time type of thing I don't know but it's kind of implying you could tell he kind of got shaken by it. But it's like, we didn't really get to hear what was inside Michaela's head. But it's probably it hinting that, like, oh, she still has feelings for um, Jared. Yes, the, the huge irony behind that, considering the fact is that, like, right, they were kind of in a good spot. And she kind of, like, got rid of that relationship to be with Zeke and married him and everything. And now it's like, you're backpedaling a little bit. I mean, it's also the thing of, like... Jared's always going to have a special place in her heart because that was her fiance at one point in time. Like, uh, it's interesting that love triangle is uh, because I was re didn't I read something somewhere suggesting like I think I read somewhere where like the people behind the show I think I was reading an article or something that I think they were quoting like someone from the show being like the love triangle isn't over yet. I think it was from like the episode with Beverly and everything like when that first started. I want to say someone was saying, because obviously they were winking to it just there, but like maybe it's also kind of implying like, oh yeah, this love triangle thing has been super complicated in the past, and it's not it's not going to get any less complicated because oh you have Jared dating Sarah, and Michaela feels a certain way about it, and Zeke has the power to read her mind or ra rather read our heart because he's an empath now. That's a whole lane of oh complicated. Like I said, I think it's a thing of, no, I'm not wanting to be with Jerry. It is because I am legitimately protective of him because he is someone I love. That love isn't going to go away. Like, I'm always going to, he's always going to have a special place in my heart type of thing, you know? So, that's what I kind of chalked that up to. We'll see whether or not that ends up being the case. Um, another angle to this episode ends up being um, the um, whole situation with... Um, uh, Angelina, and it's like, oh boy, this is gonna get complicated, because she was sitting there staring at photos of Oliver, and I'm like, are, do, do you have a thing for Oliver? So I'm like, what's going, and then I was like, you know, and, you know, uh, uh, Grace is trying to open that restaurant that Tariq was trying to open, and it's like, oh, no, why don't you come along? It's like, I don't have anything. It's like, yeah, but yeah, there's Olive's clothes, and she's trying on Olive's clothes, and I was like, wait, are you gonna try and replace Olive? And then she goes uh, to the restaurant, and, you know, it's like, oh, you and your daughters. And, you know, Angela's like, oh, no, I'm not her daughter. It's like, yeah, but she's like family. And then she also takes Eden and is able to calm her down, and Grace is so happy. Ah, and it's like, ah, part of the family and everything. And you're like, oh, boy. Even to the point later on, 
she's putting on Olive's dress, the earrings and everything. I was like, oh, this is taking a gnarly ass turn. I was like, I was, I was worried about it. I was like, no, don't let Angelina's story turn dark like this. Because it's like, you're trying to replace Olive. You're trying to become Olive. Because, once again, she has an effed up family situation that it's like, she's found a new family who's kind of taken her and treated her like family. So she's latched onto him into a very obsessive scene. Because, like I said, there's like a hole in the heart because of all that. Losing Pete. And, I mean, maybe you can make it make the argument that's also what caused the Pete situation was she latched onto him easily because it's like oh because of the calling so there's that but also because she needed to fill a hole in her heart because she didn't really have much love in her well they didn't have much of a love life but also like you know didn't have much love in her life in general because of her parents uh just the way they treated her so you can make the argument maybe she latches on the people so that's where it was happening with Pete now it's just happening with the Stone family in general and now she wants to be all of to the point that it's like, um, uh, it's like, oh, I thought Olive was here. It's like, oh, she's not back yet. It's like, well, you know, I just wanted her advice about something. It's like, hey, I'll give you advice. Uh, why don't you give her a drawing, um, you know, of her? And it's like, oh, you, yeah, it's like, oh, thanks. And it's like, oh, yeah, also, can we tell not tell Olive about it? It's like, oh, the fact is you were kind of becoming Olive a little bit. It's like, oh, this is definitely one of those things, like, kind of like, I I brought it up last episode, like, kind of a, like a jokingly, like, it's something you'd see in a Lifetime movie. I only say that because, like, my niece watches a lot of Lifetime movies. My mom watches some from time to time. I've, I've been around her enough to see that. But I was wondering if it was something like, oh, like, you're legitimately, like, obsessed with her. And you're trying to become her now. Because it's like, all oh, the wonderful life that she has, you kind of want it for yourself. Rather than just being like, oh, like, basically, oh, part of the family. I'm sidelined. It's like, no, I want to be like your daughter. And I'm going to fill that role. And it's like... You know, maybe she'll try and say something later on, or like, "Oh, Olive has taken this for granted, but I won't." Like, consider my circle. I don't know. Like, I think this Angelina story can take a dark turn. We'll see whether that whether or not ends up being the case, or whether that kind of gets pulled back because Cal's calling at the end. She was involved in that, wasn't she? Like, obviously, it's like Ben. I think Michaela. I think it was Grace. Maybe Angelina could have been Olive was like screaming, and so was he. You know, so as that volcano was erupting inside of the uh, the snow globe, which, once again, connects it as Noah's Ark, Noah's Ark thing. So, whoo! So many moving pieces going on at a time uh, uh, right now. So, definitely going to be interesting to see where all of this goes next episode. Um, I'm not sure if there... I didn't watch a preview, so I don't know if there's back-to-back -back episodes next week, too, or not. Uh, if there are... I'll just continue to do this like I've been doing this for now two weeks with uh, Manifest. But regardless, I'm interested to see where all of this takes us next. But uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, little light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.